Get thee behind me 
Hallelujah. Shalom. The Lord bless you. It's good to be back tonight. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that we are alive and well, strong and healthy just by your grace. It's by your mercies that we are not consumed tonight. Oh Lord, whatever we have done, we have said, we have listened to, we have imagined decisions we've taken, places we've been to that are against your will. Father, we ask for mercy. Even Lord, whoever has gone against your will oh lord for a little leaven leavens the whole lamb that has leavened all of us father we ask as a church body that you have mercy and wash us and purge us with your blood tonight in the name of jesus right now i take authority in the realms of the spirit we are assignment of darkness. Every plot of the enemy against our service tonight be nullified, be cancelled, and be aborted in the mighty name of Jesus. Any weapons that have been released against us, we cancel their activity and we stop them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, you are welcome. We invite you to take the highest seat, manifest your power, glorify yourself, speak to us through your word and power, save, deliver, heal, transform, that at the end we'll be careful to give you praise. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. It's good to see you again. God bless you for making time to be part of this virtual service and god bless you for using your data to join in this service may the lord continue to remember you in jesus name i want to appreciate all of you for coming on tonight i want to appreciate the pastors the elders the leaders the workers deacons trustees musicians every one of you god bless you i also want to appreciate our media team you are doing a great work the lord bless you even as you've taken time to make this broadcast there uh, a wonderful one. May the Lord also beautify your life in Jesus' name. Pastor Kinsley, God bless you for the great work you are doing. More grace and more anointing for the work and the years ahead. I also want to appreciate our Pastor Tay for the opportunity given me to minister to you, special people of God tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight it will be preaching and prayer and prophetic mixed together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go straight into the word of God. Uh, taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 28. I'll read from verse 1 to verse 6. Let me read it quickly from the King James Version. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malta or Melita. And the barbarians, and the, what the barbarians showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. Verse 3, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. Verse 5, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How bad they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Verse 5 and verse 6 will be our theme or topic tonight. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. So tonight we'll say, shake off the beast into the fire. Hallelujah. And when they had looked for a long time and a great while, they changed their mind. Tonight, whoever was wishing your hurt, whoever was wishing your death, whoever was wishing shame for you, whoever was wishing your failure, will change their mind because of the word of God concerning your life. I didn't hear an amen. Hallelujah. 
for a brief background when we start from chapter 23 of the book of Acts we, we see where Paul has been doing the work of God let's, let's start from where he, he, this man a Pharisee who was so zealous for the, the, the work of God and was persecuting the believers persecuting the followers of Jesus persecuting the Christians and one day after he had got certificates to go and arrest and chain and bring them on the way as he was going to Damascus God was also on the road to Damascus with him and God said ah this young man this zealous man I have an assignment for him and God crossed him on the way to Damascus today I declare in your life whoever is zealous and after your life to destroy ah, may the Lord cross them tonight in Jesus mighty name amen so after he turn around the Bible said that he went around uh, preaching the gospel not only to the Jews, to the Gentiles, to kings. The Bible says he returned to Jerusalem. Before his return, there was a prophecy from uh, from one of the prophets. I think it's Agabus. He said that the man whose belt I have am holding is this. This man shall be tied and put in prison. But Paul was not afraid to go to prison. Ah, for the gospel sake, somebody listening to me, because we have the Holy Ghost in us, we don't fear death. We don't fear man. We don't fear the persecution or the that's the enemy plan for us. Why? Because that our end is secured. God knows our end from our beginning. So no matter the challenges that will come in between, the Lord will secure us and the Lord will preserve and protect you. Amen. So he got to Jerusalem. He was arrested and he was put in prison. They, they wanted to kill him after two years going back and forth, trials upon trials. Now he is brought out to come and face a jury. Glory be to God. And this apostle Paul, hallelujah, he is a Jew by birth. He was raised up as a Pharisee. He was educated as a Pharisee. But he is a Roman as a, he's a Roman by choice of citizenship. So he, this man has really seen life. This man has exposure. And now there was a conspiracy against his life. The Bible makes it understand that there were 40 men who said that we will not eat and we will not drink until we see Paul killed or we see his life terminated I have come to declare to somebody tonight, I don't care how many people that have vowed and made a curse on themselves and said that they will not eat and they will not drink, this means that they are fasting, that they will see your head, they are fasting, that they will see that your marriage will break, they are fasting to see that your children will die untimely. They are fasting to see that you will give up in ministry. They are fasting to make sure that your business will collapse and you will come to nothing. They are fasting to make sure that you become a beggar in life. These men vowed and they even laid a curse on themselves that they will not rest, they will not eat, they will not drink until Paul is killed. Hallelujah. I have come to declare to somebody tonight and I don't care who is fasting uh, and waiting for your death, your shame. Uh, it will never come to pass because your time is not up yet. Uh, they will fast and fast and they will they will fast until they can fast no more. Why? Because it is not of God. Whatever the Heavenly Father has not planted uh, shall be rooted out. So whatever their intention, whatever, I don't care that comes. I don't care groups of people that have vowed uh, that they are waiting. They will not rest. They will not sleep uh, until you have been shamed, until you are disgraced. Uh, tonight I have come to announce to all of them uh, that their fasting will be in vain. Uh, their fasting will not yield any result. Why? Because the Lord is with you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I don't get the conspiracy. Amen. Hallelujah. That has been released against your life. That conspiracy will never come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Second Samuel, chapter 16, uh, the Bible makes us understand that there was trouble in Israel. In the house of David, David, a son of Solomon, has risen against his father to overthrow him and to become a king. And David was afraid for his life. All the men who were very close to David, the counselors, uh, the financial appointees, the, the political 
analyst, all of them, had left David's side and joined forces with Absalom. The Bible says that and the conspiracy was stronger. David was afraid for his life, so he had to run away from the city of David to that valley. Uh, went up the hill to where the, the garden of Gethsemane is uh, and then climbed the hill to the Mount of Olives. It was a steep hill. And in this journey, that journey takes about a day to accomplish. Uh, he went barefoot. He was he put on sackcloth uh, and he was weeping and crying the whole day to climb to the mountain of Olives. Uh, and when he got there, he cried upon the Lord uh, and said, Oh Lord, I hate to fell. Whenever he gives counsel. It is like you God himself who has spoken tonight. Oh Lord, I cannot fight Ahitophel and I cannot fight the conspirators because the conspiracy is so great. Everyone has joined them and they are seeking my death and my downfall. But oh Lord, tonight, let the counsel of Ahitophel be turned to foolishness. And, uh, by, by the, by, and the Lord answered him speedily. And immediately, Ahitophel gave a counsel, and the counsel was regarded as foolishness. Tonight, I declare over your life, wherever there has been the conspiracy, wherever Ahitophel is speaking, may the Lord turn that counsel into foolishness. May the Lord turn that conspiracy into foolishness. I today hear an amen. I said, may every counsel of Ahitophel be turned to foolishness in the name of Jesus. Christ, hallelujah. We move further to Second Kings chapter six. Uh, a man, a man of God, Elisha, Hallelujah, who God was using. The Bible says that, and the king of Syria plotted and planned uh, to assassinate the king of Israel. Uh, but this plot was exposed, uh, and Elisha told the king of Israel, "Do not go this way because your life is on the line. Uh, there are assassinators, there are people who are plotting for your death, uh, as in the case of." Paul, uh, they have plotted, they were laid in wait uh, that when he's been brought to the courthouse, uh, they would terminate his life. Uh, it was the same as for the king of Israel. So Elisha said, Do not go that way. Uh, it didn't happen just once, not twice, not thrice, so many times. Uh, and the king of Syria called his aides and said, uh, Who amongst you has been exposing our plans? Uh, because what I even think and plan in my bedchamber, the king of Israel knows. Uh, and one of his servants said, it is not us, but there is a prophet in Israel. I have come to declare to you tonight, in the plan, in the plot, I don't care where that plot is being taken, whether it's in the closet, in the bedchamber, may the Lord expose that plot tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the plot of death, in the plot of assassination, in the plot of disgrace, and that has stand against your life, wherever the plan has has gone on now. Uh, tonight let them be exposed. Uh, tonight let them be exposed. Uh, tonight let them be exposed. Uh, in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the king of Syria got that armies and sent them to go and bring the prophet uh, who has been exposing his plans. Um, and in the morning, uh, Gehazi got out, uh, going for fresh air, and he saw the armies of Syria, and he went to Elisha and said, man of God, uh, uh, wake up, wake up, there is something happening, uh, our life, we have been uh, surrounded, uh, uh, our life is under threat, uh, uh, it, the armies of Syria have come with chariots uh, and horses and valiant gallant soldiers to arrest us, uh, man of God, come and have a look, and the man of God laughed and said, ha, ha, ha. The God I serve, He is the mighty man of war. <laughs> so, ah, uh, Gehazi, do not be afraid. Uh, do not fret. Uh, oh, because the, those who are with us uh, are more than those that are with them. Uh, and the Bible says that they pray, pray for the Lord to open Gehazi's eyes. Uh, and when his eyes was open and he saw in the spirit, uh, he saw chariots of fire that have surrounded the armies of Syria tonight whoever has surrounded you uh, and is waiting
waiting and is laying in wait for your life. The host of heaven, warrior angels, have also surrounded them. Let me put it this way. The surrounder who is waiting to waste your life has also been surrounded by the host of heaven. And none shall escape. And he prayed that blindness will fall upon them. Tonight in the name of Jesus. In the camp of the devil. Wherever there has been a gathering. Wherever armies of demons, witches and wizards or cutting powers. Have been released to surround you to seek your life. Tonight in the name of Jesus. May blindness be released upon them. May blindness be released upon them. In the name of Jesus. And David prayed a prayer in the book of Psalms. He said, Oh Lord, let their ways be dark and slippery. Tonight in the name of Jesus. And the conspiracy. And the conspiracy. And the gathering of wickedness against your life. Wherever they have gathered. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, may blindness fall on them. May blindness fall on them. May their ways be dark and slippery. In the name of Jesus. They will will never find their way to you. They would never find their way back home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, may their ways be dark and slippery. Say, oh Lord, in the conspirator against my life, in the gathering of weakness against my life, tonight, oh Lord, may their ways be dark and slippery. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are those that, there are those that are with us are more than those that are with them. Glory be to God. They are this, the towers of fire are around you. So the enemy cannot terminate your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the plot against the life of Paul was exposed. On the way, they faced a shipwreck. On the way, storms blew. On the way, there was so much loss. But the angel of the Lord visited him and said, Paul, you will get to your destination. There shall be no loss of life. And the Bible says when they realized in the morning, they had landed at an island. The island, and they realized it was Malta. They got out of the wreck. And the people that showed them so much kindness. Uh, may the Lord uh, cause wherever you go to uh, the people you will meet may they show you kindness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But something happened because the weather was cold. Uh, they lit a fire so that they will warm themselves. Uh, everybody got some sticks uh, and they lit fire and they were getting warm. Uh, only Paul, uh, uh, only you, uh, somebody listening to me, uh, everybody will set up business. Uh, you alone when you go into it, you incur debt. Uh, everybody will put in an application. Uh, they will accept the application. Uh, you alone, when you put in an application, the application cannot be found. Uh, everybody will, uh, they, they will seek for favor. Uh, you alone, when you go, you will be returned. You will be disappointed. Uh, but uh, uh, Paul puts his hand in the uh, uh, put, put some sticks. Uh, and he was also going to get warmer. Uh, and when he got near to the fire, uh, a viper came out and fastened itself onto his hand. Uh, somebody listening to me. Uh, maybe there's a viper uh, in this uh, in this life, in this world. Uh, a viper called sickness. Uh, a viper called failure. Uh, a viper called disappointment. Uh, a viper called untimely death. Uh, a viper called poverty. Uh, a viper called death. Uh, a viper called prayerlessness. Uh, a viper called struggle. Uh, a viper called all promise and failure that has fastened to your hand tonight there shall be a performance I didn't hear an amen and the Bible says the people look at him and they thought that he would die because this viper's venom uh, was more than any viper that can be that can be compared uh, and the venom we are talking about uh, this venom when it is injected uh, runs through the bloodstream uh, and the first assignment is to go into the heart uh, to attack the heart and seize and cause the heart to fail uh, when the heart fails uh, the body will begin to collapse hallelujah and the viper 
in the form of sickness that has been injected in every area of your life, every venom released into your business to attack the heart of your business, to cause the heart of your business to fail so that your business will crumble. Any venom released against your marriage, released against your ministry, released against your children, released against your finances, released against your pregnancy, released against your finance, whatever pertains to you, to attack the heart of it, to cause death, today in the name of Jesus, there shall be a change of mind. And the Bible says, and they looked on, waiting for him to fall suddenly and die. But he wasn't falling down. The enemy is waiting for you to give up. And you are not giving up. Brother, sister, don't give up. The enemy is waiting for you to pack your bags and leave. Brother, sister, don't leave. The enemy is waiting for you to resign. Don't resign. The enemy is waiting for you to denounce the faith. Don't denounce the faith. And they waited and waited. And they had a change of mind. Why? Because whenever that viper in just venom into a human being, those people die. But Paul was exceptional. Now tell yourself, my case is exceptional. My case is different. My situation is different. I am different. I don't care how many people have died out of what I am going through. I am not going to be a casualty. Hallelujah. And they looked and they waited. And this man was not falling down. Instead, he was rather getting stronger. He was rather getting confident. When you are anointed, you get stronger in the midst of challenge. When you are anointed, you get stronger in the midst of attacks. And you get more confident. Oh, the Bible says something. But when war arises against me, uh, in this will I be confident. Uh, so whenever war arises uh, against you, a child of God, uh, that is when you become more confident. Uh, and the Bible makes us declare and understand uh, that in chapter 28, verse 5 and verse 6, uh, and they change their mind. Uh, somebody who is waiting for your death announcement, uh, somebody who is waiting for your obituary, uh, they will change their mind. Uh, I didn't hear an Amen. I said they are changing their mind in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he shook off the beast into the fire. He shook off the beast into the fire. And the beast was consumed. And their minds were changed. And he did miracles in that island of Malta. Today in the name of Jesus. And the beast that has fastened itself upon your life, upon your marriage, upon your ministry. It is time to shake them off into the fire. The fire is not ordinary fire. It is Holy Ghost fire. It is time to shake that beast off. It is time to shake that sickness off. It is time to shake that depression off. It is time to shake that sleeplessness off. It is time to shake that poverty off. It is time to shake that failure off. Shake it off into the fire. Shake it off into the fire. Shake it off into the fire. Somebody listening to me, wherever you are, in the next three minutes, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. And the beast that has fastened itself upon your life to inject deadly venom to cripple your life to cripple your ministry to cripple your body to cripple your finances to cripple your business shake them off into the Holy Ghost fire shake them off Holy Ghost fire consume that beast consume that viper in the name of Jesus in the beast of promise and failure I shake you off into the fire in the beast of struggle somebody shake them off somebody shake them off Somebody shake them off. In the beast of fear, shake them off. In the beast of fear, shake, shake, shake them off. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he shook the beast off into the fire. And he wouldn't die. Hallelujah. Tonight I have come to announce to you that the blood of Jesus is anti-venom. <laughs> 
Oh, somebody didn't hear me. The blood of Jesus is an anti-venom. It's an antidote to every demonic venom that has been released against your life. The name of Jesus is an antidote. It's an anti-venom. It counteracts and destroys and nullifies the potency of every demonic venom. And therefore, tonight, in the name of Jesus, any venom that has been injected into any area of your life, tonight, the blood of Jesus nullify and flash them out in Jesus' name. Whoever is listening to me, if you have ever slept and had a dream that somebody was injecting you, tonight, that injection, that venom that was injected into your bloodstream, into your body, let it be flushed out now by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I nullify the potency of that venom. I nullify, I flush out that demonic sickness that was injected into you. In the name of Jesus, if you ever had a dream of a dog biting you, tonight in the name of Jesus, right now, wherever you are, that venom, that sickness, that failure, that demonic contact, I flush it out, I nullify its potency, and I stop it from operation in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have just a few minutes to go. Let's let's pray. You are praying. Any counsel of Ahitophel against your life, any conspiracy against your life, whoever is fasting, that they are not eating and drinking until they have seen your downfall, until you have, or they see that you are dead, until they see your obituary. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, may that conspiracy be turned to foolishness. In the name of Jesus, just lift your voice for one minute. In the name of Jesus, any conspiracy against my life, against my marriage against my home against my children against my ministry let it be turned to foolishness oh lord tonight every council of Ahitophel be turned to foolishness be turned to foolishness in the name of Jesus wherever there's been a gathering of wicked men who are fasting and waiting for my disgrace who are fasting that they will not eat until I am brought to shame uh, that they will not eat uh, until I'm disgraced uh, that they will not eat uh, until I am dead uh, that they will not eat uh, until I give up in life uh, tonight wherever they are Holy Ghost fire chase them uh, Holy Ghost fire scatter them uh, I release blindness upon them uh, oh Lord may their ways be dark and slippery uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and every castle of heat of a big so in Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that every counsel of wickedness, every counsel of Ahitophel has been turned to foolishness. Father, we thank you that every beast has been shaken into the fire. We thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Continue praying. The time is so short. So take these prayer points, take these prayer topics and keep on praying. We are pushing, push, push, push means pray until something happens. Say, so I'll say pray until you see your answer. I say pray until something tangible happens. Pray until you have your testimony. Pray until you see your miracle. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Have a good night's nice rest in Jesus' name. And a wonderful weekend ahead. We'll meet on Sunday at the Tema Auditorium. God bless you. Shalom. Bye-bye now. Would you be free Thank you, Jesus.
Come on.